Hey guys, it's Eric with Painting Business Pro. Today I want to talk to you about standard operating procedures um, and why you should care, what they are, how you make them, why they're so important. Um, this is something I think probably most businesses are missing. All right, and this is something that is absolutely critical and fundamental if you want to grow a company. You have to get good at this. Um, so we're going to get into that today. So first, uh, I want to talk about what they are and why you should care, and then a book called The E-Myth. So if you, if you run a business and you've never read The E-Myth, that would be a really good book to read, but I can summarize it really quick and say that the key to The E-Myth is it says uh, if you want to build a business, you've got to start to be the business owner, not the operator, not the technician, not the person on the ground floor doing it all. You need to be building the business. And how you build the business is you essentially build systems and put people in place to operate those systems. And so it's really the, the big takeaway for me from reading that book is just the importance of creating systems in your business. And a system is a set way of doing something that gets a reliable result. Okay, so if you look at a restaurant that is, is you know, in the book they, they use a bakery as an example, who's making apple pies, you want to have a set way of making an apple pie so that every time your bakery makes an apple pie, it comes out the same. You know, if I'm a customer and I come into a restaurant and I eat your apple pie and I really like it, and then I come back the next time and it's a totally different apple pie and there's no consistencies, I can't rely on you as a business, as a business, as a customer, I can't rely on you as a business to deliver me a consistent result. So we need to have systems to deliver consistent results. We also really need systems in order to deliver consistent results for employees. So if you're going to hire an employee and pay them $50,000 a year, you want to know that if they follow this system, they'll produce these results, which makes me able to pay them $50,000 a year. So we need to have systems in our business in order to grow the business. So a standard operating procedure is how is a standard way that something is done. So one of our standard operating procedures is the initial phone call. So that's how we set a customer up for an estimate. It's a standard operating procedure. Another standard operating procedure is uh, the welcome call to a new customer. So how what our production manager says on the phone, the things they cover, the questions they ask, and the things they go through with a new client. Another standard operating procedure we have is our projections and how we ma manage our production projections and how we keep our clients updated as our schedule changes and progresses once we get closer to their start date. And we have hundreds and hundreds of these. Just our production manager position has probably 35 or 40 standard operating procedures at this point, and it's ever growing. We're always adding new procedures based on, excuse me, based on what's needed um, in that position. So anytime we keep having problems or gaps in our company and we need to improve something, well, we put a new standard operating procedure in place. So this is something you want to get really good at and used to as a business owner. And I think most business owners, especially in the trades industries and the contracting industries, it's mostly people who have standard operating procedures, but they're in their head, right? So if you're watching this video, you, you probably have a certain set way that you talk to a new client. You probably have a set way you ask for reviews. You probably have a set way that you do your final walkthroughs and what you look for. You probably have a set way that you make your paint orders. You probably have a set way that you manage your finances, but it's all in here. And if it's in here, we can't, we need to get it in from in here out on paper so that you have a documented system. And then once it's out of your head, you can tweak it, tune it and adjust it. So we're going to go through now how you can make your own standard operating procedures for your business. Because even if you go and you decide to invest in one of my programs where you're going to get a hundred of our standard operating procedures plus a bunch of training. That's one way you can get started with this. Even if you do that, you still are a business owner. You still need to be taking those, tweaking those, improving those, adding more because everyone's business is going to be a little different. We're not all going to run the, the identical business. My program is going to give you a lot of the foundational stuff that you are going to want to need and use. And it's going to save you a boatload of time in creating these, but no matter who you are, you should be able to create these on your own and pretty much for the rest of the time you're a business owner because this is what you're doing when you're building a business. If you're not building systems, you're not building a business. So let's jump into kind of some of the steps to doing this. So the first thing you do to create a standard operating procedure is you actually do something. 
Like maybe it's you call the client and set up an estimate. You do a final walkthrough and collect the check. You put, you actually create a production schedule. You're doing something. You're doing something every day, all day in your business and everything you're doing in your business should become a standard operating procedure. So the first thing is you do, you're doing something. The next thing is you need to write it down. This is the beginning of your standard operating procedure is actually writing it down. Type it up and put a label on it, call it whatever that procedure is going to be. Just give it a name and it's, that's a place to start. All right, so you're gonna write it down. Then what you wanna make sure is you wanna have some kind of measurement for your procedures because this is how we're going to improve them. So for example, we know that a good salesperson when they follow this process should always sell 35% of their estimates. Now what we're working on now is how do we get our salespeople to always sell 50% of their estimates. This isn't including referrals, but you know, we should close almost all of those, but 35% of the estimates get closed if they're following this set of procedures. Now we're working on what are the other procedures we need to put in place and things we need to train people on so they can always sell 50%. So you do want to be thinking about like how do you measure, you know, for each position, you know, whether it's sales or it's production or maybe it's marketing or maybe it's estimating. How do we measure someone's performance? We also know like with our estimating procedures, if you follow these estimating procedures properly, then we should be able to produce that job for 50% to labor and materials. So our labor cost plus our material cost should be 50%. If you have estimated properly, that's the measurable result. Okay, and then anytime someone doesn't get 50%, we can look and see did they screw something up or do we need to improve our procedure? So these are the first three things you would do as a business owner. You're doing something, you're writing it down and documenting it, and you're putting some kind of measurement on it. So maybe you sell 60% of your estimates, right? So you're gonna start documenting what you do at your estimates. The next thing is, when you start building a team, now someone else is gonna do it. So you sell 60% of your estimates, and you've documented kind of your phone call, and then how you interact with the customer, and then how you close, how you write the contract, how you close the job, all these things, right? and then someone else starts doing it, your new team member. And we're gonna measure how they do it. And maybe your team member is only selling 30%. So then I have two questions I can ask myself right, right now. Are they doing it right? Sorry for the writing. Are they doing it right and what's missing? So the reality is, is there can only be two things. If you sell 60% of your estimates and you've documented what you do, then if they do exactly what you do, they should also sell 60% of their estimates. If they're not selling 60% of their estimates, they're either not following one of your procedures the right way, or there's something that you haven't documented that you do, but haven't trained them on. So that's step five, is we're gonna keep finding gaps and holes in our standard operating procedures um, to kind of keep improving them and we find those gaps and holes by watching people. So we see, I'm watching my team member and I say, hey, you're not getting the results we want. Why not? Are you either not following one of our systems or do we need to add and put a new system in place? And this is a never ending process. And then the last thing is, again, we're gonna keep and forever we're gonna be fine tuning our standard operating procedures based on the results we're targeting and aiming for. So this is a never ending process of literally been building standard operating procedures and tweaking, tuning, fine tuning them for the better part of a decade. All right, so we're always working on this. In fact, this year I've added probably 20 or 25 standard operating procedures just to our production manager position. And uh, so this is highly, highly important and something you wanna start to create as a habit in your business um, because this is how you're gonna be able to scale a company. You need to have these things in place. You absolutely need these things in place if you wanna be effective at building teams and leading other people, um, which is a really tough skill to learn. But if you don't put these in place, oh my God, it's nearly impossible to train someone to be effective. You are gonna massively struggle at building a team if you don't have really good standard operating procedures in place before you start building that team. So there's two ways that you can go about this. 
Um, one way is you can just start from scratch and start doing this work on your own. Um, that's no matter who you are, you definitely want to at least do that. Um, the other thing you can do is you can save yourself hundreds and hundreds of hours and you can go and get the painting business pro course or the PPP growth course and shortcut a lot of that time because we've been building these for the last decade and there's about a hundred of these systems already in place. Um, you don't need to follow them of course, but uh, there's a lot of proven stuff. We've been literally tweaking and tuning and um, getting these systems dialed in for, for several years now. So. Um, I'll put a link to the courses down below, uh, but I hope you found this, this video valuable and I don't care who you are, if you run a business, start documenting what you're doing. Even if it's one of these a week, in two years you'll have a hundred of them. If it's one a day, rock on, you'll have 250 of these done by the end of the year. But start setting aside time to build your systems and build your standard operating procedures because that's truly the systems in your business that are going to allow you to grow and uh, continue to flourish and, and succeed over the years. So um, hope you found this useful. Drop a comment and let me know, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.